there. The spirit of food to it. Amen. It'll work out in time. Because <clears throat> God doesn't make any mistakes. Men might make some, but God doesn't. When God says move, things are just right. Now man moves on his own. Got a thousand things that but when God says you just feel that spirit, power of God moving. Well, we love you all this morning and we appreciate you so much. Uh, next Sunday night is youth night. I see a movement among the youth here that I've been waiting on. They're starting to participate. Uh, some of them are getting back from the town where they used to be. They're coming and praying around the altar with people when they come. They're moving a little bit closer to the front of the church and they're paying attention. And uh, man, you know, I don't know if I've never fussed that or anything. Because that's a good way to have them never get to where they belong. Just love them, pray for them. But that skit they put on the other line, the drama team, and I don't know if they're going to have something like that, that Tiffany's going to be in charge. And this age group is coming up now where you're starting to take over one the other. Boy, I mean, hey, that's a great blessing for the church. It means the church has got a future. That's it. Amen. Amen. And you got a young pastor, uh, you know, look out the future for the years. <laughs> no, uh, there'll be someone to step up out of that crowd. You young folk that got saved and are older, you don't need one. Uh, you've got my phone numbers in the bulletin. If you have any questions, you want to get baptized, you let me know. I don't push people too much. Because I let God deal with you and you come to me. And you tell me that God has it upon me to do this. But the Bible says, He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. And we do need to be baptized. I want you to pray about that and think about it. And uh, I want you to, to obey the gospel. And that way you will grow in the Lord. Because that's, that's how we grow. And uh, you just think about that, pray about it. I believe God will move you in that direction. All right, you have your Bibles today with them on the screen. And uh, I appreciate that revival, Brother Mike's preaching. I, uh, Sister Lawson, I was talking a little bit this morning. And you know, if that's not the best revival, it's a little best that I've seen. Like, I mean, I've been here a long time. Maybe I forgot some of you. But I, the Spirit, every night, there wasn't a dead night, there wasn't a night, and the Spirit wasn't moving. I mean, you were touching people. And it was just a glorious time of the Lord uh, in that regard. Now, if you be, uh, that's uh, chapter 3 of uh, Daniel, the 15th verse. Since you want to look it up. You pray for it. Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, how story, and the dulcimer, and all the kinds of music. You fall down and watch the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast into the same hour, into the midst of burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Who is that God? Who is that God for sure? We like to think about for a few minutes. There is a touch of arrogance in the king's statement here. We've got a lot of arrogance but towards God today. We've got a whole lot of arrogance towards God. Even some people that supposed to be preachers of God have rose and risen and think they know more than what God does. They think they can tamper with His Word. They can change it. And they can make it better. Brother, what God said cannot be made better. And you can rally against it all you want to, but you're never going to make it worse. God's Word is precious. It is golden. It is in perfection with no fault in it whatsoever. And man had best just leave his hands off of it and leave it alone because God's Word will stand when the world's on fire. Now you say, preacher, then who is this God that has so much power? Well, I know this morning that everybody in here that's acquainted with this God 
who knows him by the name of Jesus Christ? You know the answer to that question. But sometimes we have to have an answer for the devil when he comes around and says, where's your God now? Or who is this God that you're following after in such a stupid manner? Like last, last week when we stood to our feet, when we put our hands together, when some people begin to shout and walk around the church, men would look upon that and think that we were either drunk like there was on the day of Pentecost. They would look at that to either think we're crazy and completely lost our mind. And I thank God this morning that both of them are true. That's right. I lost my old mind and I got my new mind. When God saved me, I got drunk not on the old mind, but thank God I was drunk on the new mind. And believe me, that new wine will make you shout, it will make you dance, it will make you praise God, it will make you in the middle of nowhere look up and see that God owns everything. And so this morning he said, you'll be well if you bow to my image. All the world wants us to do is bow to the image. Now you may not notice this, but I suppose you do, that their own government is trying to switch it around slowly but very surely into an aspect of life where that they want us to do what they say and not what God says. Brother, let me tell you, it doesn't matter how bad they get in Washington, D.C., how many rules they make, how many regulations they put down, what they say we can say and don't, I could, can't say, I will still stand in the midst of it all and I will say this is my God that saved me and redeemed me this is my God that is my blesser. He's my Savior. He's my Redeemer. And there's not a law that you can put on the book that will make me back down from it. Because He is my God. He today He's my God yesterday. He'll be my God tomorrow. And with this world, this together with a great scroll, I thank God that them all the world has passed away and it's rolled all up in one bundle and cast as far away we can't even see it by the hand of an almighty God. I want you to know that I'll stand in the midst of it all. And I'll have a new world. I'll have a new body. I'll have a new life. And praise God this morning. You know why? Because I know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I know the God of the Hebrew children. I know the God of Daniel. But thank God this morning, best of all, I know the God that I was just mine. My very own over 
I can't stand that expression. My God, I'm not ashamed of it. I don't even have it upstairs in my house. I'm like that little old place where you put insulation.